and welcome to the studio. Today we're going to have a look at another composition. Uh, once again, it's from scratch, so I don't even know what we're going to do just yet. So we're going to have a little bit of a play around with the piano and just see what comes out. So today I've got loaded the 8DIO Steinway scoring piano, which looks like that. It's quite nice. I also have it running through a reverb at the moment, which is East West Quantum Leap Spaces, LA Cathedral. I've got all of my dry signal pulled out. Wet signal is pulled over there, which is around about Unity. And I've also pulled down my pre-delay. So it's almost no pre-delay. And I haven't fed a great deal into it. This is my send across to the reverb. So I've only got around about minus 12 dB sending into it. So you can see there's not very much going in there. I could send a whole heap more but the pretty delay sort of is dominant there, but I'll just keep it around about where it was before. It's subtle and yet it's nice and spacious. Pull that over there so it's not in the way. So what we'll do is we'll just have a bit of a play around with the piano, have a bit of a improvisation and uh, we'll see what comes out. I'm in the key of G. Okay, so we're starting to get a little bit of a theme here going on. I'd like to play with that a little bit longer. So what I'll do is I'll just press record somewhere around bar nine and I'm not going to play with a click. I just want to be able to be a little bit more free flow with my rhythms. I could stick it to a click, but then I can't do this. Okay, and so if I'm going to be coming in and out of my rhythm, of my tempo, sort of uh, making my tempo go up and down as I'm improvising, I definitely can't have a regular click in the background. So I'm going to leave the click off and there is a way to make the click fit what you do. But for the time that we have today, we won't do that. I'll show you another time how to do that. It's quite fun and interesting. So here we have Pro Tools, I've got all my tracks set up, I'm on my piano track here, recording on the MIDI side of things. Okay, and later on, we'll print it by recording the exact piano track on the WAV file, so we'll have a printed copy. Right, starting around about bar 9, roughly speaking. Whoops, try that. And I don't think I need a pre-roll, I'll just start. Click off by clicking numbers pad seven. Keeping it simple. Thank you. 
There we go. Save that quickly. So I'm just going to go in and just, there's minor things I just want to fix at the end here. And I'm going to just pull down some of these volumes. So let's have a listen. Yep. Okay, let's pull that out so we can see all the notes. It's too loud. Okay, cool. Now, without being too much of a perfectionist, uh, I've just adjusted a little bit there just so that I don't get distracted later on. I'll change that back to clips so that I can see what I'm doing. Hold down Option and scroll backwards so I can zoom out. Hold down Shift and scroll so I can go back and see what I've got there. Let's have a look at Ghost Writer. While this is playing back, Lenny's. There is something I've been playing with before, Astral Pad Heavenly, which is quite lovely. I'll show you what it sounds in a minute. So essentially it sounds like this. So as you can hear, it's a, essentially it's a dulcimer being played lots and lots and lots of layers of dulcimer hammered. It creates this wide, lovely pad, which can sit beautifully if you use it right. I think that'll be good, but what I'll do is I'll just, I'll label it, Astral Pad Heavenly Mid and Web, whoops. So there we go, I've just relabeled those two, but I'll, I'll go to my second channel on play and I'll see if I can go something a little bit more traditional. In fact, what I might do is I might go with uh, boys choir. Mmm. I'll make them say mmm. Add. In on MIDI channel 2. Come back out on MIDI. Oh, sorry. Auxiliary channel 3 and 4. And that's what I've already got it set up as here. Alright, cool. Now I do definitely want to send that into the reverb because choirs love reverb. I'm going to pull that volume back here, so it's mostly reverb. How nice does that sound?
Okay, so we'll start the choir somewhere here. It's sounding nice. Choir, mid, rev. And I'll also post some sheet music so you can actually play this yourself and reproduce it yourself on your own door, on your own system. All right, once again, this is playing off the cuff. We'll just see what comes. You know what? At that point, I'll stop the ns and I will make them ah. Okay, so I will make a new instrument, but I'll change this a little bit later on. Higher ah, uh, mid, web. Okay, and I'm going to make it still the boys. So we'll go to vowels, ah, boys, boys, vowels, ah, add, oops, I'm going to take out that one, delete. So that one here will be going in on MIDI channel three, coming out on uh, five and six, auxiliary five and six. So MIDI channel three, plug in, play five and six. And there we have it. It's going to be coming through there and out there. All right, so from here. Let's have a listen. Okay, so what I've done is I haven't done the reverb, so I'll pull the reverb down there and I'll pull the volume back. I'll match it to that minus 13 decibels. It's a bit more heavenly and spacious. Okay, let's go. And <laughs> what I did notice there is uh, the choir mm, stayed on because silly me cut it short and didn't adjust that. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll bring the mms back in right at the end there.
we do that. may or may not keep that but we'll just see i'm just gonna change that to notes and those came in just a little early so i'm just gonna change them so they come in somewhere there f2 so it can be slip mode somewhere there yeah that's better now this r here goes on an awfully long time, but what we'll do is when we print it, we will um, fade it out. Go back to clips, squish it up. I don't need this sustained on anymore. Uh, right, so what we'll do quickly now is skim through and just print these three tracks by pressing record on the wave there, record on the wave there, and record on the wave there. And what it will do is re it will record the web files of each of these tracks. And we'll come back to it when it's finished. Right, lovely. Okay, so now what we're going to do is stop that. And the first thing we're going to do is pull this back. Whoops. Get that choir R cut off well before we needed to. So just adjusting that fade. We're also going to adjust that uh, fade out of the the mms as well. So that's in there. Let's have a little listen to the R crossover. Oops, I'll just hold down option and get rid of all the recording of the midis. I even think I'll fade those ums in. Press B to cut that. That only works if you've got, whoops, this thing here, the AZ yellow. You can use single key commands. So. So I think that's fine. Let's tidy things up a little. Right, okay, so we've got our choir set relatively. What other instrument do you think might work there? Now that we have that choir over the top, I think I might go back to this astral pad and just have a listen and see. But pull it right back. So it's mostly reverb. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so I'll bring it in there. 
I've brought the volume up just a touch, mostly all swishy reverb. Keep it really high. Don't worry, I'll um, have that turned down a little. Okay, by that stage it'll be all faded out. So let's just record that quickly so I can do the fading. Okay. Okay, good. So pulling that back to here, get it to fade out from there. Fade up to that point. Let's have a listen and see how that sounds. Okay, cool. I'm happy with that. That's actually not too bad. Okay, so now I'd like to add another instrument, uh, but I'd like to keep it light and gentle. I don't want to add too much bass just yet. So I'll, I'll take play over here. And we'll have a look, and I think I might go into my plat platinum percussion and go with a glockenspiel. Glockenspiel? Should I do a glockenspiel? Yes, I should. Add. So it's going to be coming in on MIDI 4, coming out on 7 and 8. Shuffle that out of the way. Once again, lots of reverb that I don't necessarily want it to be too far up the back. Here it is. Yeah, probably a little. We'll keep it fairly close to the front and fairly quiet. Okay, so we'll do the three notes there, essentially. So I'll slide it in so I can see this a little bit clearer. That way I can time it. Rather than timing it to the grid, I can time it to the actual MIDI notes. And I'll just clean up the grid a little bit. There we go. Now I'm recording down on here. I've got to relabel it first. Always a good habit. Clock, mid. We have... I'm just touching that ever so gently rather than just just a tiny tiny bit of sound there.
Okay, good. So I'll just change that to be starting a little higher. So what I need to do now is just quickly go through and place these exactly where the piano track is. So I'll drag this up so it's right next to it. Open up piano a little bit. Close this up a touch. Just so everything's a little bit closer at hand. Stretch it out. It's okay if it comes just behind it but not in front of it. Like that one's in front of the piano. And what we'll find if it's in front of the piano, then it's a little bit more dominant. And we want the piano to be slightly more dominant. This is just, it's like the little girl in the background in the far corner. And I think that's it, save. Scroll out, see sometimes things which look overwhelming don't take that much time at all. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll put that back down to where it was, change it back to clips, squeeze it up, and I'm not going to print that one just yet. And I think in order is another orchestral instrument, and I'm not sure what just yet. I don't really want to go too low, and I'm not sure if I want to go. Hmm, non vibrato, yeah. Cross fade. This piano, yeah, definitely this one here. Okay, so add. Um, once again, I'll pop a fair bit in reverb. And I might push this one up the back a little bit further. Volume down, and I'll pull this, pull this volume out.
Yeah. Okay. That's cool. I'll use a little bit of this. Rename violin. Whoops. Mid. Wav. Right. Let's have a little go and just see. I'm touching it real soft. And because it, it runs out after a time, because it's a pure sample, um, I sort of have to touch it a few times. So touch, 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 just to keep it bowing. So here we go. Recording and see what happens. Okay, and I'll fade that in. Okay, I'm going to start that section again. And again. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, and so there's uh, some timing issues in some of those sections, but not too bad. And I didn't really like going so high over here, so what I might do is I might actually completely obliterate that altogether. And I'm not going to miss it, I don't believe. Whoops. Yeah, well, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay.
Okay, so that note's wrong. Zooming in, holding down option, I mean. Pulling that back to there. Okay, that came in too early. That's too loud. Lovely. Let's just have a listen to the first bit. And obviously I'm going to be fading that section in. Okay, that, I'm gonna bring that in. Over here. Oh, I think I'm going to have to repeat that. Oops. I don't mind the gap there, but this needs to start earlier. That's better. No. Yep. Too slow. Yep. Okay, that's sustain need to change so I'll go down here hmm yeah that's it nice so I'll print the violin first and I won't make you sit all the way through that I'll stop the recording and uh, start it again right at the end okay apply crossfades so I want this to fade out somewhere there that is fine just put a crossfade there. Get rid of this section here because I don't want that there. Crossfade down. I'm just gonna do this. Try that again. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and now this beginning part, remember I said I would fade that in. So uh, I really want to pull it there. And I'm going to bring the fade past that first note. And I'm going to change the type of fade to a bit of a cusp shape. Yep. 
Yeah, that's not too bad. It'll suffice for now. Right, so what can we do down the low end, if anything at all? All right, so I'm going back to my trusty strings, going to a solo contrabass, long, sustained non-vibrato. Gonna pull a little bit more volume into it. But immediately pan it over. Label it. Okay, let's go. Back a little so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, go in now so I can see. And I'm just going to record straight up. Subtle, but there. Oh yeah, I just got those notes wrong. Those ones there, that was a major. Beautiful. Save. I'm just going to record print a double bass section because I'm really very, very happy with it. It's quite easy to do to do the double bass because there's singles and double notes. Usually a normal double bass will only play one note, but because I'm playing a keyboard, I can do whatever I want. And so in this particular case, I've played in some sections two notes just to imitate there being two double basses 
at once. Now, in a real orchestra, you might have up to nine double basses, uh, which would be fantastic. And I can keep on recording over and over and over this solo double bass, and that would be the best way to get a full orchestral double bass section. I do have a nine double bass section, which is a sampled nine double basses, but it's just a little bit mushy. I just like that woody tone that you hear there, those swells. Lovely. Okay, stop. I'm going to give that just a small fade out. Yeah, that's good. This one here, I'm not... Yeah, I hear that? It crossed over, so I've had my sustain pedal down too long. Sustain. Now, was that this section here? It was, wasn't it? All right, so I'm just going to re-record over those few notes. Okay, better. Pull that back a little. Small crossfade. Pull that back a little that way. Small crossfade and have a listen. You can pretend that the two double basses are sort of playing around there. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. And do you know what? I think I'm done. Let's just have a listen to the choirs being panned. Got the choirs panned over to the right. We've got the piano a little to the left. Astral Padders dead center, or wide and full. Double basses over to the left. So in actual fact, the um, all the sweeping energy is all the way over to the right and to the center, so I might I might pull the choirs back just a touch. Yeah. They're okay to be over there. Glockenspiel, a little bit more to the left. Cool, and the big R's. <laughs> oh, wrong one. Yeah, about there. Not bad, not bad. Not bad, not bad. Okay, save, and I shall now bounce. The entire doodad to disc. And while it's bouncing, you can just listen and enjoy. Command option B, 24 bit 48 kilohertz. This is good. This is my settings that I use for synchronizing to TV and film because that's generally what the other guys go with, the film guys. 48 kilohertz, definitely. Sometimes they do 16 bit, but realistically, I always do 24 bit, always. There we go. New folder called Bounces. I'm just going to put the date. I'm going to call it Light Piano. Whoops, I've got lots of capitals going on. Piano and Choirs. Just for now. And you can listen and enjoy. Mm -hmm. 